Annie Hayden is the proprietor of Annie from Wales, a guided tours service based in Swansea. One of the tours that you give is a literary tour of Swansea. Yes. So, why should the literary tourist come and take your tour in Swansea? Because Swansea has still got the ghost of a town it was and the bubble of a city it wants to become. And because it's still got architecture around that connect way back to pre-Victorian times, the writers that have come from here, you can still feel, because you're actually touching a stone or, or, or walking past um, something that they actually walked past as well. So it's creating the atmosphere, uh, the backdrop to their lives. And maybe by feeling that backdrop, you connect better with their work. And not just the stones or the houses, but the view of the uh, the ocean and the smell of the salt and the sound of the seagulls, I suppose. Yeah, everyday sounds. Yeah. And everyday sounds to them in, in before our time. And who did the city spawn? Many writers, uh, many artists. There, there was an era... Um, post-First World War, where art seemed to erupt in Swansea. Prior to that, Swansea had been a place for artists to visit, artists of, of all disciplines and mediums. But visit for, for what? Because the light is different for artists who paint. Different from the rest of the world? or Different from other parts of Wales, different certainly from England. Because Swansea had an industrial side and an open country and seaside. It was in conflict with each other and it, it could show different things. Maybe also because of the pollution that the industry mm. created, created a different light again. Conflict or different worlds colliding is one way of looking at Dylan Thomas's life. Of course, he's the most famous son, would you say? I believe he is, of Swansea, certainly. And what's your connection with Dylan Thomas? I fell in love with him when I was 13 because I'd asked who he was in school and they said, you don't know about him. Oh, so of course, being the contrarian. Yes, <laughs> yes. So that's okay. what I wanted to know. Okay. Uh, and what I realised was there was a lot of Dylan Thomas's personality that was like mine. Like mm. what? Rebellious. Iconoclastic, really. Yeah. And the emotional stuff. I understood where he was. And where was he? He was emotionally insecure. Okay. And he recognised it in, in himself. And why do you think he was emotionally insecure? He said he was. He actually yeah. wrote that in his letters. But you can actually see in his work the turmoil, the needing to understand, his relationship with his family, especially his father. What, what, what was the problem there? The father-son relationship was very much teacher-pupil. DJ Dunn's father. He was a man of his time, certainly, uh, where, you know, men are men and women do their job and all that. Mm. But he had loads and loads of issues of his own. And the only thing, really, relationship he could bring up, build up with his son, was through English, the language of English, mm. which was the father's subject. He got a PhD, didn't he? Which is no, he got a first class honours degree, which was the only one in Aberystwyth University that came out that year in English. Right. right. So clearly, uh, an accomplished uh, He's mind. A, yes, an intellectual. Yeah. But an intellectual with huge concrete blocks on his shoulder. Right. Kind of barren emotionally. Would you Very say? Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Okay. I think the only emotion he felt was jealousy of the fact of life. Be well, he got turned down, yes. right, for yes. a professorship at the yes. Swansea University. Had just sort of started up in nineteen twenty. We right? can't substantiate that, but Florrie Dylan's mum said that that DJ had applied okay. for academia and had been rejected. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether Florrie is just covering that up, you know, as a, as an excuse for her husband's disgruntled, miserable self. Yeah. Or not. Okay. Uh, but he was obviously an intellectual man and a frustrated man because he became a teacher. 
and he was trying to pull away from his working class roots, pull away big time. Which in part is why he, <coughs> with his wife's money, as I understand it, bought this, it's, it's not palatial, but it's quite a substantial home, isn't it? And, yes. And wh- what's the address on that? Number five, Condonkin Drive. Okay, and what's your relationship to that house? I was one of the restorers of the house. When the house was taken under lease uh, in 2005, the restoration began, and it was completed in 2008. And what we did was take it right back, skin it like an onion back, to the bones of what it was when they moved in, the Thomases moved in to an unfinished house. So they moved in in when? August 1914, as war was declared. And was the house just be built at that Newly point? Newly built. Newly built, okay. There was plaster that needed, hadn't been drying on the, you know, okay. just slightly unfinished. Right. But heavily pregnant, they moved in. So yes, the house itself is, as I say, it's not grand, but it's it's pretty significant, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's a decent, decent house. Decent in more ways than one. Hmm. Um, the working class are used to living in terraces. Number five, Gundonkin Drive, is a semi-detached. Well, that, that already tells you that it's not working class because you'd be in a terrace of houses. And so this fit with DJ's ambition? Yeah. Okay. And Uplands was on the west, the first point west of town centre. And west is best because of the pollution. The pollution holds in, in the east and not in the west. west. Okay. So DJ's ambition was good to go west. Right. Young man, go west. Now, was it, it was uh, Flory's father's money that they used as a down payment, or how does that work? Flory um, was the youngest of seven children, and she was born on the east side of Swansea. Um, she inherited from her mother freehold property in the South Wales Valleys, and it was rental from that, those properties that helped secure a deposit for number five. Also, the fact that her brothers were very protective of her. They sussed DJ out pretty damn quick. Which means what? They saw him for what he was? Which is well, yeah. They, like they, using her? or Not using her. I mean, he no. used her when he, when he made her pregnant. You know, they had to get married, these two. So he got her pregnant, they got married... And uh, not long after they were married, she lost the baby. And from that point on, he made her feel, and she accepted, that she married above her station by entrapment. Oh, dear. Yeah. And he could only play the above your station card because he was educated, and she wasn't. But strictly, she was above him because she was a freehold property. <laughs> in okay, her own yeah. But in... in Edwardian Wales then it was education that was the one that got you up out of you know the coal dust so they had this lovely house Mm -hmm. they had a maid yes and yet they didn't seem to have much money around no so that's what Dylan grew up with was this sort of wait a minute there's something wrong with this picture yes very much so they were living in a facade Dylan said it was lace curtains and no breakfast keep up the facade. They had um, Addy, who was um, a nursemaid when Dylan was born. She was there for about 18 months. Dylan born a very weak baby, a bronchial baby. The father, even then, say, no, you know, get the kid out of the way, take him away, for God's sake, you know. Mm. But what they were doing, they were aping the upper class. DJ must have loved it, because the maids were definitely working class. Mm. And he was standing on their heads to get above that. The fact that they had a maid made him feel better. Yes, he's on the way. He's on the way. Okay. So when Dylan was young, he used to play in a a nearby park. Mm -hmm. And that's part of a tour that you... you, Perhaps you could give us a bit of a pricey of of a, a kind of tour that you might give to someone who wants to learn or experience the, the locale, the, the atmosphere. Okay. The location that, that coloured Dylan's life more mm. was at the immediate area around the place he was born, where, from a back window in a house, he could see the pollution. 
you could see the death of of people in the town below. The death well, because people, they're just being worked to death. Well, bad conditions, health conditions, yeah, yeah. overwork, you know, yeah, lousy living. Conditions. Exploited. Yeah, yeah. So he could see that mm. uh, from his very posh house. He could also see from another window further west, down towards Mumbles, mm. where the sea looks as if it's going into infinity. Which is a peninsula, right? And yes, a, yes. And the Mumbles is... Is the uh, beginning of that peninsula, yeah. but the end of Swansea Bay. Mm. So he's got the house with its upstairs-downstairs feeling, mm. with the, the don't-do-that-and-let-somebody-see-you conditioned feeling where he, he's taken to Sunday school down the road with his mum, but not never with Dad, because Dad's so disgruntled he, he declares himself an atheist. Um, but he's got the park, and he's got the hill above the house that's got a few rough boys, because they are uh, quarrymen and things like that up there. Mm. And his parents don't want him bothering with kids like that, because we're going to be middle class. So he's seeing that. Cumdonkin Park, which was right next door to his, his home, really. He could skedaddle through to cut through to the park. And it did become a world within his world, where it had the, the bell ringing, Parky, the park keeper, keeping an eye, you know, an authoritative eye. He had the reservoir that he could throw stones at the ducks and the, and the um, um, birds as a boy. He could write his name on trees and he could let his Im- Im- imagination fly mm. because he was an isolated child. Why was that? He's he, shy or...? He was shy, very, very shy. Overprotected by his mum. Coddled so that it was only in his head... He had the friends and the colours. But he did, he did have friends, though. Later. Like, so from when to when didn't he have friends then? He didn't really have friends when he was a young child. Like from age, to say, five to ten? No, well, he didn't go to school till he was seven. Then he went he to a did. dame school, which yes. is, um, he used to say it was his prep school. It wasn't. There was a few kids there that he kind of yeah. caught on yeah, to. Yeah, and, and there was one there, Mervyn Levy, who he, he continued... Yeah. Uh, knowing through his life. But they weren't friends because the Thomas family, DJ especially, didn't want people in his house. You think he'd want to show it off? No, he's antisocial. You mm. can show off without them coming through your gates, aren't oh, you? Right, they can just look at the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, DJ, antisocial DJ, contaminates the, the family actually because Florrie Thomas is gregarious, she wants to meet people she talks Mm. she's lovely Mm. she she wants gossip but not many people will come to the house because they don't like DJ and he doesn't want them there either and he'll he'll go on a a little bit of a um, a rant because other people are drinking his tea or coffee because he's got no money schoolmasters don't make very much money then I guess they did they made more than than anybody could it was steady but DJ was ill quite often and he was drinker of course, he didn't get paid No, when he was ill. When he was ill. Yeah. He suffered, they think, from depression as well. But he did drink. Yeah. And when he drank, he became aggressive. And was known as the professor down in the pub. pub you yeah. know? So he wasn't entirely antisocial if he went to the pub. There's a different type of being social, though, isn't it? He wasn't sort of um, hail fellow well met. He was there in his so, solitary... So do we go to those pubs then, or do you take people to those pubs? They can certainly go to the pubs. Any in particular? The one in town has got to be gone to. It's called the No Sign Bar. And that's where you will definitely get the feeling of a time when Dylan drank there. Mm. Because it hasn't changed. Period. period, Yeah. yeah. It's like a front room pub. Other pubs have changed. Because time does march on. But even so, what hasn't changed around those pubs is the type of architecture that was there right. then. So you could still get the feeling of what was going on. Did you get the feeling? Can you, can you explain that a bit more? Is it, it's a big deal, so you go to the pub that he drank at. Big deal. 
Yeah, no big deal if you don't think it and feel it. it it's, it's a guide's job to create that feeling by so, what they tell you and how they build up to it. And how do you do that? I, I just shout at people, really. <laughs> <laughs> and tell them to shut up. Shut up. All I try and do is to connect them with the personality of this eternal adolescent of a boy. By to, doing what? To start getting them on his side, to understand his, his reactions to people, mm. his actions. The fact that he, you're telling us that he was shy and that he was... Um, Emotionally it, insecure. Yeah. So you, you would give us a bit of a biography and... The what tour, else, the tour what else? starts really with giving the background of the family. Yeah. The personalities... Okay, so a bit of biography, and then you take us through his, chronologically, I guess. You try to recreate some of that imaginative fun that he would have played, that he would have participated in, uh, either on his own or with others in the park. Always with others, watching. Mostly on his own. He would watch the Mitching boys. He would watch other people. He was a great observer. I mean, he was bullied when he went to grammar school. He was bullied. Grammar school still around, or...? Parts of it? Mm, the grammar school is. In, yeah. um, the residence of the headmaster is still there. But it was bombed in the Second World War. But there is, a, there is an exhibition that can be seen there. As a tour guide, it's my job to create the background of the story of a writer especially. Not to be a teacher or preacher of their work. That isn't my job. Because no. reading and understanding is somebody else's business, Mm. not mine. If I can colour in a background for them, then maybe the reading will be more understandable. Mm. Or maybe they would want to read more or read again pieces of work Mm -hmm. with different eyes. Yeah, you want to motivate or encourage your visitor, whoever you're guiding, you want to sort of excite them about this individual. And so, specifically, what do you do to do that? You tell them stories in locations about what happened in his life, Mm -hmm. what happens still, and you show, actually, that this bloke called Dylan Thomas is timeless in more ways than one, not only in his his writing, Mm -hmm. but in the fact that the human beings he knew were still around. Might be different names, might be a different age, but the human race hasn't changed. So we still have the same characters here. We Mm -hmm. still are Welsh that have the same humour, the same sarcastic dry humour. You have to, to mould it all and bring it all together. Well, he knew Richard Burton. He did. Uh, it was quite, he was about 10, 11 years older than yeah, Burton. Yeah. Burton was, was born not too far away from Swansea. Ten miles round the bay. Right. So is that something else you, you do? I haven't done it. I haven't done it more than I need to do it. He is important in the Dylan story. He's important in his own story, but yeah, as you said, you're saying, he, he wrote diaries yeah. for many years. Yeah, and they're very well written diaries. And they've recently been published, yes. haven't they? Yeah. Um, very well written diaries because mm. he's he was a thwarted writer, mm. as Burton. He's important in the story of Swansea Bay. Again, important because. He made it so big or brought, a, I guess, a certain pride to the region? Because he got away from the coal mines. Mm-hmm. He escaped. Well, and, and so is Dylan. Glory. Yeah. Of, yeah. Really, I mean... Yeah, I but mean, Dylan came from a different position. Dylan was not going to go ever down the mines, ever. Right. But Burton would have. In that way, they're different. The, 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 the starting block is different. But... Their voices come from the same region. Their accents come from the same region. And, and it's interesting you mentioned too, they both took elocution yeah. lessons at a fairly young age to kind of get the Welsh out of them. Yes. And yeah. so they do both sound very King's English. Yes, know. very yeah. much so, unless they're drunk. <laughs> right. And then the Welsh accent comes out. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they were both drunk a fair amount. Yeah, a few times. But those two men understood each other. There was a symbiosis there. But again, although you tell an an interesting story about Thomas asking Burton for some money toward the end of his life, what happened there? 
Thomas uh, went over to Burton, or what it was, saw, saw Burton, and asked to borrow a couple of hundred quid, just before you, and Thomas was due to go over to the States on the last trip. And Burton refused. Burton and Thomas really made it. At the same time, it's post-war, these boys started to make it. Um, Late 40s, yeah. early 50s. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, they both became like pop rock stars, didn't they? You know, yeah, it, bang. On the world. I mean, I read that uh, you know a thousand people showed up to a to a Dylan Thomas reading. That's more. Just, uh, that's unheard yeah, of thousands. for a poet. Yeah. So they had the same pizzazz, mm-hmm. but they had the same insecurities as well. But Dylan met Burton and asked him for a couple of hundred quid to pay for his son Thomas's um, son's education, and Burton didn't loan it. Of course, Thomas went over to the states on that fourth trip and didn't come back. He, was, he shouldn't have gone in any case. He was already having blackouts. But he needed the money, as usual, and his marriage was on the rocks. Because he didn't come back, Burton took on the guilt that many people take on if there's a death or a suicide or something. They feel that they could have done something to prevent it. Mm. And he was in that position. We don't know why he didn't loan it. He never said why he didn't loan it. I mean, but it was a fair amount of money back then, but, but not a hundred pounds. But it wasn't but huge. Not a lot for Burton at that no, point, because he had started yeah. making money. Yeah. But he was he was buying property for his family back in Wales. He wanted to see them all right, so he might not have had any disposable cash. Only Burton will know the reason, and it's not for us to judge. The fact is, Thomas did go over. He didn't come back, mm. and Burton felt the guilt when he was buried. Burton. Uh, who's not buried in Wales. He's buried in Switzerland. Right? Yes, Cellini. Yeah. So, I don't know how to say that word. Mm-hmm. Or whatever yeah, that word we'll is. we'll figure it out. Yeah. He was buried in a red suit, red for Wales, and he had Dylan's collected poems, a book of Dylan's collected poems, on his chest. The romantics will say, this is his guilt going to his grave. Well, romantic or not, this was a man who loved poetry from a young child... Uh, and Which I is then, unusual for a miner. Yes. Or a mining family. Absolutely. And yeah. he'd have been seen as a bit of a sop. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're better at spitting than you are at reading poetry, or you should be. But whatever the reason, I only Burton will know the reason he had Thomas's book there. It, it's quite lovely that his name and Thomas's name are still bound, you know, yeah. um, together. Mm-hmm. And of course, Burton performed some. Yes. He was the first voice in Undermill Wood. And he worked with Thomas in the third BBC Third programme. And they were recording um, a novel poem. I don't mean novel funny. A novel mm. oblique poem about the First World War by David Jones. And it was called In Parenthesis. Mm-hmm. And I, I think really that the title In Parenthesis comes from the fact that it wasn't a poem and it wasn't a novel. Yeah, it's it was an odd thing. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, you know, and they performed it together on the third program, and that's how they met. And that was post Second World War, mm. about nineteen forty-seven, eight, something like that. You mm. know? But there was a click. There was a click. Mm. You know, we all know what that click is—that symbiotic click. Mm. When su- suddenly you, somebody you meet it doesn't matter whether it's an opposite yeah. um, gender. But you just think, huh, yeah. and, and it's sorted. You love them. Yeah, you know, you yeah. just get on there as if you've, mm. you've been there forever. And that was the symbiosis between those two. But they both came from a, an area that has a bay, like, you know, a funnel that throws mm. out a voice. And that's what both of them did. They threw out voices. Yeah, because uh, Thomas had a, had a wonderful, marvellous voice yeah. too, didn't he? Yeah. What about uh, anyone else? You mentioned uh, Bowdler. Bowdler, yes, Thomas Bowdler, the the man that cleaned up Shakespeare. They say among he, among others. Among yeah. others, yeah. But the one that that, that they say um, was the best thing that happened to Shakespeare because he made Shakespeare family friendly. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should do that for Thomas and make him family friendly. Oh, God, God help, please. God help. Yeah. But no, Bowdler lived. Um, in the village just below Thomas, um, in Bryn Mill. A few years earlier, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but down in Bryn Mill, Bert Trick lived. And Bert Trick uh, was a man older than Dylan, 
um, and Dylan called him um, communist, um, communist grocer. Um, he was very good, Bertrick, to Dylan, because he was an older man. He gave Dylan more stability, more, um, more grown-up information, rather than just being a poet. He brought the words a world of politics into Dylan's life. Dylan was not political. Okay. Um, and Tripp was a was a, a known uh, a journalist or writer or no, no. He wasn't. Okay. No, he was. Um, he was interested in literature. He right. was. He was right. an educated man. Yeah. Um, but he was worried about about, about the fascist. And, uh, you know, he was political. Okay. Um, so he influenced? He influenced Dylan. He, well, he made him aware. Yeah. Because Dylan was polit- politics with a small P, not a big P. Okay. Um, but Baudelaire, you've got a great story about uh, his, uh, wh- where his remains are. Oh, his remains. And yeah. that church in particular. Yeah. He lived in Bryn Mill uh, in, in a house called Riddings House. Um, which locally we call Bowdler House now, of course. Um, but when he died, he was buried down in the Mumbles, mm. in All Saints Church. Uh, and it's a church that's got um, a clock tower uh, detached from the church, as they were then, that were built. Um, a clock tower that's only got three faces, because each side of the, 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 the tower, the, um, the people on each side had to pay a contribution for a clock face. And one of the sides didn't have enough money. So it didn't get a clock face. And it still hasn't got a clock face. And this was way back. Yeah. You see, we, we, yeah. we don't ever forget. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But Bowdler is buried there. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any... Uh, uh, I mean, with Dylan Thomas, there's there's a Dylan Thomas centre here yes, in uh, Swansea. Is. And... Uh, and a, a very interesting exhibit mm-hmm. with some of his uh, early editions of his works and illustrations, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about uh, uh, Baudelaire? Is there anything that you're aware of here? Any? No. No, okay. But it has been said that Dylan Thomas went down to the Mumbles and got a little bit bladdered with his friend and peed on Baudelaire's grave. Well, here, here. Yeah. Um, That's good. But and we can't substantiate that. No, no, no. <laughs> well, there's so much we can't substantiate, right? Yeah. Uh, and what about Burton? Is there a, any kind of little museum or exhibition? Not or really. Not really either, okay. I mean, I think it's tragic, tragic that the diaries are in Swansea. Yeah. It's my hometown, and I think it's tragic they should not be here. They're at the university archive. They are, and indeed. they're difficult for people to see. I Very much so. Yeah. Um, if you want to get people interested, the only the only time I found out, the only once I've tried, yeah, properly, and that was when I did have a literary tour, the very first one I did, mm. and I wanted to get the people in there to have yeah. a look, you know, yeah. just to Touch. have a look. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh dear, the protocol. They don't want you there. This isn't a tourist thing, thank you. Mm. This is an academic thing. Mm. Now, not every tourist will want to look at Richard Burton's diaries. No, but if you're going, on a, liter- if you're going on a literary tour, yeah, there are some in particular, will. you're going to yeah. have an interest. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think there should be a, a rally, rallying cry to get those diaries over, over to Taibach. Which is where he spent much where, of his... Where he grew up and he blossomed. Yeah. yeah. Um, he blossomed know. because he was... Uh, someone heard him reading uh, some poetry. Yeah. And, and, and realised what he had. That's yeah. right. Okay. He was in a secure home, a yeah. loving home, mm. in, a, in a small community mm. where everybody knew, what, you know, yeah. where they were in it. And then ended up with a mentor. But there's a library still over there that he went to. Mm. And the area needs rebirth. Mm. It really does need rebirth. Mm-hmm. Um, who better than this bloke to do it? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. 
you know, restore the library, secure the library, mm-hmm. and put him and his work in there, mm-hmm. so he's touchable. Yeah, and our, an archive of the, of the films too. Yes, I mean, yes. you just turn it into something that's yes. Uh, How about a Richard Burton Centre role for there? You know, yeah. just yeah. just do it. God knows it's an area that needs help. Okay. You know. Um, who better than somebody from the past to do it? Anyone else that you can think of connected with the city? Um, Alfred James, painter. This, or is it just on literary? Just stuff, yeah, right? literary is what the focus is. Um, Let's think. Oh, there's there's, there's quite a few really, um, but they're not well known. No. Okay. Well, this uh, that's fine. I mean, we've hit a, a couple of big. I there know. are other well well read. Swansea's so. got so it's got the, the the special collections of the university, but that's really not on the itinerary. Um, anything anything else connected to, to the? To, is there a is there a writers festival here? Is there? Yeah, a, thank you. There is yeah. the Dylan Thomas Festival. Okay. Um, that runs um, from his. Like in his life dates, yeah. which are the twenty seventh of October to the ninth of November. Okay. Um, different forms of entertainment in different venues go on. Yeah. Um, there are other sub festivals going on as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but worth seeing. What what Swansea is is becoming aware of is that there are huge that there are different strata of people. Not everybody wants the highfalutin tootin um, academic talk, no. nor the very basic of things. But you have to embrace them all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people want to meet him on their own ground, yes, I guess. Yes, but but they do want to meet him. That, yes, exactly. Yeah. You have to yeah. be introduced to the man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that there is a growth. In, in, in the different levels that are coming through. Mm-hmm. Not all given by the city, but by individual projects and organisations that are coming through. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so theatre and lectures and yes. and and they have the, the prize as well. Yes. Um, so there's... It sounds like that's a good time of the year to, to visit then, to, at the end of, uh, yeah. end of November... Early, early uh, end of this October, early November. Yeah. Um, or you could come in before uh, in the in the Swansea Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is what? That that's in um, September, August, September. And what is that? The Swansea Festival is music and arts. Okay. Um, <coughs> so okay. the same things will. It won't all be slanted towards Dylan. Right. Right. Okay. It'll be slanted more to a, to a wider base of culture, okay. cultural format. Yeah. Um, now, coming into Swansea, there's, uh, I mean, King Arthur is associated with uh, with the region, I guess. Mm-hmm. If if there if there was such a, uh, a well, character. he was a he was a Welsh myth, you know. Well, yes, but the, I know there's all sorts of attempts to to tie. Uh, Myth to reality, um, and and so. And you've got to remember, we've got a good sense of humour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like to pull legs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but nonetheless, there's uh, there's the Duke of Monmouth. There's uh, Mallory. There's Longfellow. They've all written about this mythical character and. The, I suppose everyone sort of wants to to, to suggest that uh, you come here and you'll really get the Arthurian experience. But is there? I suppose it's that again. That's very much up in sort of in the ether. Is it? Or, it can I mean, only be in the ether, though, can't it? It can, but uh, didn't you mention that there's a but. <laughs> Now that we're in Wales, amongst Welsh people... Don't ever forget that he was Welsh. Mm Mm-hmm. And nobody disputes that. Okay. Um, In Gower, on the spine of Gower, 
All right. That's that's sort of heady. That's that's mumbles. Area, no, it's right? it's the um, um, the Ridgeway on Ranelston. Okay. So it's go and um, Gower is only um, eight miles wide. Okay. Um, split down the middle. So you've got North Gower is Welsh and South Gower is English speaking. Mm. Right on the spine, Kevin Bryn. But is that the sort of north end of Swansea or where is it? Exactly. West. West. West, okay. west, west, west. Keep going okay. west. Right. Um, the, the furthest point on Gower is for Scilly. And it's the closest to America you'll ever get from here. Okay. Um, but on the spine of Gower, uh, is Arthur's stone. It's a Neolithic stone. Mm. Still Arthur's stone. Mm. Um, so called, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And legend, folklore has it, that um, on the other side of the estuary, where there was his camp, Arthur's camp, he came out um, of the tent one night and had a pebble in his sandal. And that annoyed him and he picked it up and he threw it. And it landed in Gower as the stone, mm. the Neolithic stone. Mm. And there's also legend and folklore that that stone comes down off the plinths every New Year's Eve and walks back down to the sea to be able to try and touch where it came from across the estuary. Mm. And that if you can feel warmth when you touch the stone, then you will be feeling the magic. No matter what time of year it is, you will feel the magic of that stone. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me Arthur wasn't Welsh, boy. He's ours. And there is a slit in there. Right, where you can park your bicycle if you need to. If you need to. Yeah, okay. If you need to, but you have to climb up a bit to do it. Well, thank you for uh, sharing stories with us, real and imaginary. And, uh, and I guess really that is very much a part of, of Wales, is, is, is storytelling. Yes. And um, so it's a good place to come and create experience, your own, create, create your, your own, own story. story. Yes. You know, weave us all into the story, just mm -hmm. as Dylan did, mm -hmm. and just as people do in our own lives. Yeah. When, when they come into our life, they're already starting to weave into it. So create your own story. Thanks so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I've been uh, speaking with uh, Annie... Thingy. Yeah, it's going to come to me. It's like the devil. Okay. It's like the devil. It's... Annie, I've been speaking with Annie Hayden, who is a she, who runs her own tour company in Swansea, Wales. So next time you're anywhere near here, do you have a website? Yes, Annie from Wales. dot com. Mm -hmm. Annie A N N I E yeah. from Wales. dot com. Mm -hmm. Thanks again. Thank you. Can, Ooh. I, can I go home now? Yeah, um, that, thanks. I'm so sorry. That's a what? Sorry? Oh, did you want your